During the recent decade, CMR has become the diagnosis tool of choice in tertiary care centers for patients with evidence for acute non-ischemic myocardial injury. CMR allows for targeting several features of myocarditis, inflammatory hyperemia and edema, necrosis and scar, contractile dysfunction, and pericardial effusion. Edema is an important hallmark of inflammatory cell injury. T2 weighting imagings detect tissue edema using the long T2 of weather-bound protons as the contrast generating mechanism resulting in a high signal intensity of edematous tissues. Triple inversion recovery turbo spin echo sequences with inversion pulses for fat and blood suppression provide excellent contrast between regional edema and the normal myocardium due to the dual suppression of the fat and the flowing blood signal. Short axis views typically provide a more robust image quality than long axis images, although uh, apical slice may have to be discharged because of artifacts related to interventricular blood signal. In addition to increased free water content of tissues, inflammation also leads to hyperemia, increased vascular permeability and a net expansion of the extracellular space. Cardiac magnetic resonance techniques to target these changes include T1 weighting spin echo images acquired pre-administration and early post-administration of an extracellular gadolinium-based contrast agent. LGE imaging uses an inversion pulse to decrease the signal response from normal myocardium, thereby highlighting areas with increased accumulation of gadolinium as a bright regions. Myocarditis lesions tend to be patchy, subepicardial, in contrast to ischemic lesions that involve the subendocardium and the mid wall and to favor the basal to mid interlateral walls. In this image, you can see the presence of fibrosis in the subepicardium of lateral and infralateral walls in basal and mid ventricular segment. In this, the presence of LGE in the middle wall of the septum. Dysfunction in myocarditis can be focal and the surrounding myocardium may compensate by an increase in contractility, which leads the affected myocardium appear with normal contractility. Furthermore, the predominantly subepicardial involvement of more severe injury may leave the contraction of other myocardial layers unfected. Regional distribution, extent and hemodynamic significance of pericardial effusion can be assessed in a standard short axis and long axis steady state free perception images acquired for morphology and function. This sequence type has an inner hand T2 sensitivity, rendering pericardial fluid with bright signal intensity. T1, A, C, B and T2 mapping have a clinical utility in the diagnosis of acute myocarditis shown by a number of clinical studies and may be used in conjunction with the Lake Lewis criteria. Additionally, mapping techniques are sensitive to less acute presentation of inflammation and are able to detect subclinical forms of myocarditis as a part of systematic inflammatory disease.